basically, I'm just going to uh, walk you through some of the things that needs to be talked about even before learning new skills. So um, while it's very easy or very easier to just start thinking about learning digital skills, um, there are instances where there might be issues going forward because sometimes when you don't really have idea of what the course entail, what the expectation should be, what are the challenges you will face, um, you might get to a point where you will just get knocked out, really. And the joy of learning new skills is not to actually fall into the pit, but rather it should be an avenue where somebody feels fulfilled at the end. I've spoken with several people who do design, who do coding, who do programming and the likes. Most of them right now are not satisfied with their job. And when I try to understand why, I see that it's because we've, we don't really streamline our focus. Sometimes when we try to start a job, our focus mostly is about making money, getting a new job. And it's very easy for those things to fade away. Because when you get a new job, then what next? Okay, when the job keep paying you, at some point you feel like, oh, the payment is not enough. All of these things really cause worries. And sometimes if you don't manage it properly, you might end up not even feeling fulfilled. And that's the reason why I am introducing five W questions. That's what I call them, the five W questions. And you're going to be seeing what those questions are all about. The five W questions, really, I know um, you'll be wondering about what is the five W questions. They are what I call what, the what question, the why question, the wish, where question, and windows, the window question. That's the opportunities in what you're about to learn. So those are five things that we'll be checking together. If you can answer the five questions correctly, you will never be depressed in the learning process at all. You will never in any way be depressed in your learning process. And that's what makes these questions very, very, very important before even starting to learn anything at all in the digital space. No one ever learns something new just like that. And that's the fact. No one ever learns something new just like that. There's always a price to pay to learn new skills, either professional skills, digital skills, or even being an artisan, there's a sort of price that we need to pay. And for it, let us just be realistic. We are all learners, including the instructor and the person listening. We are learners. We learn every day. Do you still recall when you first get that smartphone? I actually remember mine when I got my first smartphone. That's some years ago. The night of that day, um, I couldn't sleep. I stayed up at night just to get a better understanding of how the phone works. And as I said then, a 3G internet connection was a big deal. The internet service provider could only conveniently deliver 2G. Thus, I had to stay outside on the fence to get 3G connection, so you can imagine. So imagine the price I had to pay just to learn how to use the smartphone. Not even a smartphone. I can't even remember the category of where those phone falls, but you can imagine the price I had to pay staying up at night and trying to make sure that I even get connection in order to use this phone as a den. Now, the same thing is expected when trying to learn a new skill. Sometimes you will be required to stay up at night. You need to forego some of your money uh, for some piece of training, attend some free seminar, etc. The list goes on and on. All these investments are not wasted if you can answer those five questions that we're about to discuss in this lesson. And practically, it takes commitment, patience, and curiosity to succeed when learning something new. Those are the foundation. Those are the drives. Those are things that would actually make you want to learn this new skill. So um, in this lesson, I have just listed five questions, like I said, that will help you to take the proper step so that you will not waste your time on irrelevant thing. I mean, it will be tasking. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, right? But all I am saying is that it will worth your while. 
I just believe that with technology skills, we can redefine inequality. So everyone has the right to pursue their purpose. And that's my dream. That's what I am chasing. That's the reason why I am actually talking to you right now. Because I just believe that with technology skills, we can move things around. People can have liberty to choose what they want to do, where they want to work, and how they want to be addressed in the society. And that's the move, and that's what I am trying to achieve. So my name is Noah Olatoe and I am a Nigerian entrepreneur. I'm the founder of Instinct Hub. All right. So let's just quickly dive into the five questions that you need to answer before learning any digital skill. Okay. So the first on the list is the what question. What should I learn? It doesn't seem everybody gets to battle with this question in the initial stage. While some might battle with it, but not everyone actually battle with this question of where does my strength lies? What should I learn? And how should I approach these skills? And I think I trace this down back to how we perceive this digital skill. So because there are some skills that the society is already talking about them, so we perceive that these skills are relevant. Right, so it's easier for us to just say, okay, I want to learn these skills. I want to be an expert in these skills. But let us be realistic. Every skill matters, right? Some skills are more promising than the other based on the level of research done by the people involved in that skill. It is research that brings innovation to any industry. So if you're thinking about uh, learning any skill, you don't have to be afraid. If you know that you have the intention to actually contribute to the ecosystem, mostly when learners are trying to learn new skills, they are just, you know, very hungry. They just want to consume. They want to take. But to put you at a very forefront, if you start thinking about how to give back to the community, because how this job is being embraced, both in Nigeria and in outside Nigeria, is dependent on the people currently in that space. So one way to decide or to still think how one can contribute to the industry or the kind of skill to learn is depending on the problem you want to solve, okay? So any skills needed to achieve such a solution will worth your time and resources. While thinking about trying to learn new skills, it's all around what you want to solve as a person. And in this lesson, we're actually going to be examining how to figure out the problem you want to solve. You know, um, there's still a section. I don't want to really dive too fast, right? But some of the things you will see is the problem, how to examine the problem in the community and the likes. In still asking ourselves, what should I learn? Okay. Technology is advancing every day. Some companies emerge and some companies are left behind, making it very tricky to choose what skill to learn. Right. While things like this might be worth thinking about, you don't need to stress yourself about it because there are great benefits in learning new skills anyways. So whether the skill is going to fade away or it's not going to fade away, there are still tons of benefits learning new skills. Similarly, some companies emerge and some collapse. Uh, skills and specialization are not immune to this at all. Right. So it will pay off if you choose wisely and go for the skills that will remain relevant for years to come. Okay, so while it's okay to learn new skills, learn just as you wish, it is still very reasonable to think about 10 years, 15 years possibility of the skill you're trying to take. All of these things, like I said, are going to really shape the way you achieve your goal, the way you actually learn. And this will put you at the forefront of almost everybody in the industry. Because this idea or this skill or this lesson that I'm sharing with you, 99% of learners don't have access to this kind of mindset, to this kind of knowledge before they start learning. And this is where the turning point is really, really something that each learner should take very, very serious. Talking about learning digital skills, the list are so very, very wide. So there are so many of them. And on our blog post, we've written a blog on choosing from the pool of digital career, which can be looked up at any point if you just want to have an idea. But just really recap some of the available digital skills. Um, we have uh, digital literacy, 
uh, use when you talk about digital literacy actually is the ability to consume content on the digital space in terms of the ability to create tests, create images, create audio, uh, create designs and use them in form of communicating and also in form of actually expressing how we feel. Another technology skill that um, we might not be aware of is public speaking. Public speaking is still a way of creating content. Self-management is another one. Web development, graphic design, digital media production, data science, musical instruments, business ideology, digital marketing. All of these things are skills that are readily available for anybody to pick up. And if there's anything I want you to pick out of this, learning either UX design or learning either graphic design does not restrict you to moving around. This digital skill is connected in such a way that you can be a professional in one aspect, but there will be need for you to visit other disciplines as time goes on. So don't feel shy to learn about a particular solution in as much as such thing is an input to the project you're trying to build. So it's, there's going to be several times where you'll be meant to learn, just cross-learning and making sure that things are done. Okay, so one thing to note is um, your learning is to solve problem, right? And we will talk more about this in the next section. But in the meantime, your choice should totally tally with the problem you want to solve, right? As you progress in your learning curve, um, let learn what will help you solve problem. And I will keep mentioning this thing as we progress again and again. It is all about solving problem. So moving to the next one is the why question. So why learn the skill anyways? Like why should I learn UX design? Why should I learn graphic design? These are question, they are basic questions, but if you're not very, very um, skilled or if you don't, if you're not aware of some of these things, you might actually miss the idea. So why learn new skill? By the end of this lesson, there's going to be a workbook you'll be able to use to just feel all of these things. So the skill you want to learn, the why, why do you want to learn the skill? So while you're learning, there's no confusion at all. You're clear with what you want to achieve. And of course, looking forward to the skill will be made very easy. All right, so talking about why learn new skills. So why learn the actual skill that you choose from the previous section? Okay, so um, it boils down to the big picture, like looking at the big picture. And what do I mean? For me, I think this is the most critical question you should provide answers to if you want to break barriers. You have to be serious with your why answers. It is very, very important. It is easy to give free, straightforward answers like, I want to get, I want a better job. I want to be relevant. I want um, skills because it is trendy. You know, these are very loosey things that we are likely to just feed our brains when we start learning new skills. But it is more than that. But I, I just want you to wait for a minute. Just wait a minute. If these are the reasons why you want to learn the new skills. I think you just need to stop. If for money's sake, because people are talking about it, is the reason why you want to just learn new skills, I would advise you to stop because haven't you done some research about people who already have those skills and still complaining of not getting what they deserve? We'll talk about research in the following section. However, for now, let us focus on the big picture. The primary issue with the straightforward answer is that it is too broad, okay? You need a more specific answer to not end up like people who get frustrated a year after their new job. So if you ask me, how can I be specific, which is a question I think will go through anybody's mind, I will say to you that focus on the problem around your community. The best way to answer is when you know the problem people face in your community that you can fix if you can learn the new skill. So at this moment, I just want you to start thinking through, okay, this skill I'm about to start learning, what are the things around me? Who are, what, are the, what are the bottleneck? What are the things I can solve with this problem? And that's what I am talking about right now. For instance, let's say that you want to learn data science, okay? 
what challenges will data science solve in your community? Okay, whom are the people trying to solve this problem? And what have they done? Are there areas they are missing that needs improvement? There are enough questions that 99% of people don't even get to ask before learning these skills. These are things that as a learner, as somebody wanting to really climb the highest ladder needs to ask. From my experience in interacting with students, they feel they should learn the skill because the world is talking about it. I mean, that's what I have actually picked up from my interaction with students. So students feel like they want to learn these new skills because almost everybody is talking about it, it's trendy, they can make money out of it. On a solid note, one of the assumptions is that everybody just assumes they will earn more when they learn the new skill. But you can agree with me that there are several sets of people out there with this skill but cannot still get a job. Okay, so the idea behind actually creating this lesson is to make sure that each learner have a different mindset. The mindset that will just make sure that you are not in that category of people who have the skill but are still truncated either with the mindset of earning more money and you know gain the liberty for you to create new solution to the world. Well, um, these are not for you. All the things I've been saying, it's not, I'm not saying that these are wrong reason because at least we need money anyways to pay our bills. However, the reasons are too shallow and not encompassing the full potential in solving the world's problem. So, if you want to feel fulfilled in life, you need to start thinking about what you can give rather than what you should receive. All right? I think I need to just say that again. If you want to be extremely successful in life, you need to start thinking about what you can give rather than what you would receive. I'm not saying that you must have all the answers right now. What I am saying is tie your why answer to something big. Having this in mind will shape the way you learn and how you search for answers. All right, so moving to the next one is the wish question. What are the wishes? Measurable goals. One of the most painful learning process is actually how to track the progress okay so let's just talk about what our wishes should be and how can we make it measurable most people won't tell you this when talking about learning new skills your motivation comes from within right not even from an instructor not from anybody your motivation actually comes from within you own it right and if you let it slip away your learning process will be a very tough one which i refer to a dark zone right the learning goal is the backbone of every successful learning process it will encourage you and facilitate you to stay focused so um starting a learning goal is not an easy task at all but having a clear understanding of what kind of goal you want at the end of each learning gives you many advantage and separates you from other learners going out there and give you a spirited motivation. There are many types of layers to you know, developing a learning goals. We'll be focusing on significant pillars in this lesson. The first is your short-term goal. So while trying to learn new skills, you need to focus as well on short-term goals. Right, it might be easy for you to just quickly say that, oh, I want to create designs, I want to create something that I want to ship to the market and I want people to embrace it immediately. No, you need to have a short-term goal. For me, I do not joke with short-term goal at all. They help me show quick and immediate results. Most times, I do not need anyone to acknowledge my efforts. Seeing these many goals come true make me feel much better. The outcome might not be like that of a professional anyways, but still, it is a sign that I am getting somewhere. So imagine setting out a goal to read a block of posts every week and share what you learn with your audience at the end of each week. Looking at it from the beginning, it might look insignificant. However, when you begin to look at the impact in the long run, Four reviews each month, so it means that if you are to calculate it, 
each um, one blog per, per week. If you're calculating it for a month, that's four blog per month, right? And if you calculate it for a year, it means that you've reviewed 48 blog per year. If you look at it again for five years, it means that within five years, you've reviewed and read about 240 different blogs. You can imagine the idea. You can imagine what that can do. So you see, what I am saying here, and you can, you can just imagine what I am saying here, there's no doubt that the internet will recognize you actually once you're able to make such review you can imagine if you read about 240 blog and you wrote your own review you customize your own thought out of the blogs and you publish it either on your social media platform on your own personal blog page you can imagine the internet will never forget you because when you do all of this the whole world will be able to celebrate your effort because before they search one word of course out of several number of people your name is likely to pop up because why? Over the time, you've been feeding the internet with one information or the other. So you'll be able to explore opportunities that you can't even think about. By the time the internet starts recognizing you, by the time your effort is being put out there. The second one is long-term goal. So we've spoken about the short-term goal. Now we are talking about the long-term goals. Now, unlike the short-term goals, there's a more complex, this is more complex because you're setting your eyes very long, right? Long enough to see the impossible being possible. The long-term goals involve several steps. The ability to make sure that you stay on track. And realistically, learning comes with many distractions either from your family, employers, friends, and most especially the social media. There are always some form of distractions trying so hard to pull you out of track. Please do not get me wrong. I am not saying that they are bad people or platforms. But what I am saying is that most of these associations comes with a distraction. And if you do not manage them well, they will affect your learning goals. As a result, it's going to affect your long-term goal. In setting a long-term goal, let's just look at an example. Remember, after this lesson, you will be required to actually set all of these things for yourself. So you can always make references to this uh, video at any point, but just make sure that whatever you're saying, you're being realistic with yourself. An example of a long-term goal can be, in, within the next five years, I want to publish 240 blog posts. You can imagine if you hear this thing from a very, very distant perspective, you might think this is a lot. But we've done our calculation. We're just having one blog post in a week, having another four in a month, having 48 in a year. And if within five years, you already published 240 blog posts, you can imagine what that is. It's a lot. Okay, so, and that's what we are talking about here. So, please, when creating your goal, either short or long, please just make sure that it is quantifiable. Tie a figure to it. Don't just leave it blank. Make it add a number to it. I want to do X, Y number of things before so, so, so time. In every instance, just make sure it is measurable. Tying it to a number will make it easy to, easier to track and for you to succeed. The third aspect of the wish is your work ethic. The work ethic is a very, very important factor as well, right? So talking about work ethic, if you do not take your work ethic seriously, do not even bother, right? Because don't even bother learning something new. If, you're, if you can't stick to time, if you can't stick to commitment, um, don't just bother because your success is, won't be guaranteed, okay? Now the statements, this statement might be harsh, but it is the truth. It takes a strong work ethic to be successful. If you want opportunity to find you out of several other people, right? You have to be committed. If you want to be singled out, you have to be committed to some of the promises you make 
in order for you to stand out. So you need to put in the hard work, not just, you know, making promises, not just saying, oh, I'm going to do this design in a week. The efforts need to be put in. Even when you feel like sleeping, when you feel so tired, you need to put in this effort. Now, the difference between an average man and a wealthy man is how they value time. Cancel lateness from your mind, ends forth, okay? So if you need to be in a meeting by 4 p.m., make sure that you are already seated at the venue by 4 p.m. Mainly because if you delay any of your schedules, it will affect the subsequent ones. So value your time. Do not make promises you cannot keep. Avoid time-wasting conversation. And another way to look at this is focus on your daily goal as little as it is. Even if it is just 15 minute exercise in a day, read, uh, write one paragraph of a snippet or whatever it is, tie it to your daily activities. No matter how small it is, even if you're going to be reading, just make sure that you stick to that because it's going to be an add-on to the goal you're going to get at the end. So if you're disciplined, um, if you discipline yourself to this extent, your success actually is on the way. Looking at the fourth question here, which is where, the where question, all right? So um, the where questions come from self-learning. Why, why, where should I learn? This is, can I self-learn? Can I, do, do I need a platform? Do, do I actually need to go for webinars? Whatever it is, right? So the where question. And some will say that the best way to learn is through self-learning. At the same time, many will disagree and say the most effective is instructor-based. So, however it is, some people feel, in fact, personally, some people just feel, oh, I need an instructor to understand. Some people feel, oh, I can learn on my own. Both groups have a point. However, they say their preferred option because one worked for them and the other did not. And here is the fact. You need the two right? Both instructor base and is self-learning. At some point, you need some guide. You need someone to guide you. And most of the time, you will need to actually practice and learn by yourself. So these are things you need to start thinking about as a learner. Without any course, here at Instinct Hub, uh, we are here actually to help. At any point, just feel free to contact us in case if you need any support in terms of wanting to learn or wanting clarification or clarity on some, some sort of topic or guidelines, we are always here to help at Instinct Hub. And that's about the where question. So the where, the, the summary of that is you are actually going to learn personally and you're going to learn from someone. So however it is, just be willing to learn and be willing to also contribute, not just listening, but the ability to actually give out what you've learned as well. All right, and looking about the last question in today's lesson, which is the window, right? So where is the opportunity? And I know that's like the most important question to almost every learner because you want to have an idea where lies the opportunity after I invest my time, invest my resources, how will I make profit or how will I make fortune out of the skill that I am about to learn? So while you're focusing on achieving your goal, paying attention to opportunities around is critical. At the very beginning stage of your learning process, there are always people in need of the exact value that you can produce. I always say this again because it is something that happened again and again because people at every level are in need of your skill at that particular level. The question to ask is where are the people in need of my current skills, right? Do not try to sell your ideas to people who will underestimate you. Sell your ideas and experience to those who are in need. When you do this, you will begin to see the most sufficient or the most significant impact your new skill provides to people around you. In other words, when you're trying to learn new skills, just make sure that you are very much looking for people who will value your skill. Now, if you are a learner, you won't just start looking for job at Google, for instance, or you're in the first six months of your learning. You won't just start looking for 
um, companies, tech giants or bigger companies. Because why? Those people are not looking for learners. They're actually looking for professionals with 10 years, 5 years of experience, which you do not have. So paying attention to companies or uh, startups or organizations around you who needs your current skill is going to actually pave way going forward. Using the blog writing that we spoke about as an example, so if you craft out an interesting content regularly, it will not just start pulling traffic. When you just start talking about yourself, when you just start creating things, you won't just pull traffic immediately, but it will take a little while. And that traffic at the end, when you're able to gain that traffic, it will become your, what they call in Nigeria, all your money. Because traffic these days, data these days, is what brings the money. And that's something I was talking about from the beginning of this lesson, that pay attention to not just getting new job, not just getting somebody to buy what you sell, but how can you also leave trace on the internet? So with the traffic, there's a lot you can do. You can start writing promotional content for brands. You can even assuring them of organic views. You can decide to embed Google ads display on your blog pages to make more money. These are things by the side. Even no matter the company you're working for, you can still be doing this thing by the side. So, so that... Um, you won't be afraid one day whether if the company asks you to go, where will you start from? So in other words, when you're trying to learn skills like this, try as much as possible to learn your voice out there. People don't know that if you don't tell the world that you have this skill, nobody is going to invite you for a job. So if there are things you need to do to sell yourself as someone who has this skill, then ends for those are things you need to start doing and like i said there is no little beginning it's not you're not expected to bring the most beautiful design and show to the world no as little as your thinking process as little as what you think about a subject just putting it out there it's a bit and bit that is going to add up to become a voice of yours whenever you are able to reach a milestone now, in concluding this very section, curiosity while learning is like the fuel used in running an engine. If the fuel finishes, the engine stops running. Keep your curiosity alive and you will never get bored or discouraged. Instead, you will become more successful. And that will bring us to the end of our lessons for today. Okay. Um... So basically, this is what the answer sheet looks like. You have, you have the what's, you have the why, um, you have the wishes, and there are descriptions just below each of them, which will allow you to fill in the right thing. And the idea behind this is to be able to actually communicate how you want to remember this and some of the items that needs to be worked on. So when you have this listed out, I think it's going to really help you in your journey.